Hello everyone, welcome to the fourth video to a beginner's guide on how to Revit. In this video, we will be placing structure column elements. In our previous video, I shared a link where you can download a CAD residential drawing plan as well as some Revit content libraries. So, if you did download the Revit content libraries and installed them, they should now be available if we were to go to Insert, Load Family, go up one folder until you reach Autodesk folder. Go down, Revit 2018, Libraries, US Metric, Structural Columns, Concrete. These are the elements that we need if you did download them. But what if you didn't? That means we don't have our own library to use. In that case, we need to create our own structural column or in Revit's term, a family. We'll close this one now. We're gonna go to File, Open, sorry, New, Family. Now, don't forget our unit of measurement. If you remember, we're still using metric. In that case, we're going to go to English and look for metric structural column. This one. But for this video, I want to show you how to make a family from scratch. So instead, we're going to be looking for metric generic model. Here. Now, when making a family, there's an element here called the reference line. This one. In Revit, the purpose of reference line is to add constraints when creating our model geometry. But most importantly, we actually use it to create a parametric family framework to which the elements of the family can attach to. Difficult to understand, I know, but don't worry, we will use reference line now. For now, follow what I do. Make a reference line for our horizontal area. Now, vertical. Next, we're going to put some align dimension. Click this one, equal. Do the same for the horizontal part. This one then equal now let's just clean it a bit so it will look nice okay that should be good enough let's rename this with And the other one, length. Now I know I did something without explaining it first. Now what this button does is to provide a parameter which is what the reference line is for. Let's click this one. This button actually opens the parameter properties for our element. Now let me explain family parameter versus shared parameter. Family parameter actually controls the value of the current family and it will be only usable for this family, which means the one we are doing right now. This is what the family parameter is for. Next, the shared parameter. As you see, everything else is grayed out except select. So, from shared, param shared parameter are definitions that can be loaded and used to multiple families or projects. But of course, 
we need to be careful with that because if we have the same name as shared parameter and a family parameter, it's going to cause some issues. So, you know, let's only use shared parameter once we're very used to it and we're very, very good in Revit. Next is type against instance. Type is a parameter value that is the same for all occurrences of that element. So, changing the value of a type causes all assets or all elements to be changed. So for example, let's say the width 3800, if we're using type, which we are using, if I were to put this to 4000, it will change the width of all our elements into 4000. Hard to understand, I know, but don't worry. Once we create our element, you'll, you'll be able to understand it. Next is instance. Instance is also a parameter value, but its properties are unique throughout the elements and can be changed without affecting other assets. So unlike type, we can change this whenever we want. So if I were to change this to 4200, it will not affect all the other elements. So don't worry, I'll explain more of that later on. So now let's cancel and go back to our family drawing plane. Now next, we're it's time to make our model. Go into create, extrusion, this square one and make a sketch of a square model. Now, remember the align shortcut key, we're going to align our sketch to the reference line that we made. And we're gonna press lock or the constraint, like I was saying earlier. Constraint or lock, constraint or lock, constraint or lock. There's actually an easier method to do that. Let's undo like maybe four or eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now again, let's align them. Here, there's a lock tick box here. If you were to click this and do the align once more, it automatically constrains everything. See? But let's avoid this option, not until we're very used with Revit. So we're gonna stick with the manual. Also, prefer four, always make these faces. I'll explain next time. Lock, ah, disable lock, okay. Now, press the check or finish edit. Here's our model. It looks nothing, right? But there's an option here in the bottom corner. Click fine and click consistent color, or let's do it shade. Now, let's go with consistent color. I'll explain these two bonus next time. For now, let's just use it. Okay. Now, if you remember, I was saying something earlier regarding family parameter, type, and instance, right? There's a button here, which is the family type button. Let's click this one. This dimension, these were the two parameters that we made earlier. Now, like I said, if it's type, it will be the same for everything. If it's instance, it will be unique to every model. So now let's make this to 2600. Keep your eyes here in the model. And if I click apply, see that it changed. Let's change the width to 5K. There, it's changing, right? Don't forget we're using millimeters. So let's just make it 500 for now. Let's make it 500 by 500. There's our column, but wait, we're not yet done. We haven't finished its depth or height yet. So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna go to elevation view, press apply and okay. Now, elevation view here in the project browser menu, go to front. As you see, it's not that tall yet. So let's do the same as we did before. We're going to make a reference line, lock, and sorry, we're gonna make a reference line do a dimension aligned, then lock it in place. Let's name this height. Now, lock the top part of the column to our reference line. Press this one. There we go. Now, if I go back to this button right here and change the height to 1000, 
that's that's supposed to change if we did it correctly good okay next let's change its graphics mode here we go now everything's starting to take shape we're missing one thing it's called material this only looks gray it doesn't really look like a concrete does it so let's go to material here or better yet i'm going to share one awesome secret you see this button right here this actually allows us to put a parameter on it so instead let's make a material parameter so that we can change this a bit when it's back in the model click this one Now, it's a little bit same as what we did for our dimension parameter, this button right here. Family, let's name this as something simple, just material. Type, now, under group parameter, it should be materials and finishes. Usually, sometimes it's still dimension since we used dimension before. So what if it's something like electrical? Let's change it to material, this one. Okay, and okay. Now it's grayed out. Why? Because we cannot edit it inside our family creation menu. We can only edit this once it's inside the model. Now I think we're done. We already have our structural column right here. Now that we're done, let's load this into our project. Load into project. It seems we're in the wrong view. So let's go to ground floor view. It's not yet here. So to load the column, we're going to go to structure, column, in the properties palette, click this one. It's not here. Hmm, why? Ah, now I remember. We forgot to do something very, very important. Okay. Here, let's go back to our family creation model. Sorry, family creation window. This one. Click your column, look at here. It's called a generic model. It's not yet a structural column. How to change that? This button right here, click this one. Look for structural column, this one, okay. Now, it's now considered a structural column. Now, time to load this back into our project. Load into project. There we go. Okay. Now, column. This one. Family. Again, we forgot to do one thing and it's to properly name it. But don't worry. Between ourselves, we already understood that this is the structural column. So click this one. Make sure your level or the level host is ground floor. And here. This is our structural column. Doesn't look like much I know. So let's change this graphic to consistent. Now, remember the family that we did earlier regarding um, materials and finishes? It's this one right here. So let's click this. Now, let's look for a proper concrete material. There should be one generic concrete here. Here we go. Now, let's try to use this one. Does it really matter as long as, as long as it looks concrete? You know what? Let's use this one. Okay. Still doesn't look like much, I know. Now, let's align it to the center of our grid. If you're familiar with AutoCAD, there is something called the constraint or something that allows you to automatically snap into the object. As you see here, from the end point to midpoint to nearest. So let's click the midpoint and the mid of the grid. Now let's do the same thing for all our grids. Copy from the midpoint.
there. We've placed a column on every grid. Now, let's look at the elevation north. What is this? Oh, I must have misclicked something. Let's delete that. Now, let's change our graphic option. Here's our column. Now, our next plan is to, it should, the top part of the column should hit the bottom of the first floor level. So in order to do that, let's do an alignment. We're missing 2,400, or to be easier, this one right here, 3,400, or look at here. This number here shows the offset between first floor and the ground floor. So we need our height, or rather we need the height of our column to be exactly 3,400. Let's go back to the plan view. Click one column, right click, select instance, visible in view. Now you've clicked all the structural columns in the plan view, go to edit type. What's the height that we need again? 3400. We gotta change this to casting concrete. Okay, apply. Okay, now let's go back to the north elevation. There, seems good now. Okay, so look at this bond right here. This means the default 3D view. Click this one. If you press shift and the middle mouse button at the same time, it allows you to rotate the area of your 3D. As you see, our model's looking new, looking nice now. Here's our structural column. Now, we gotta change the graphic option again. Let's change it to consistent color. And that's it. Here's our structural column model. That's it for this video. So, in the fifth video, I will be teaching you how to make walls. So I guess that's it. For questions and suggestions, please do comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe. It will help me in the long run. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.